Oh, speaking of so naive people in the past. Hmm. And now I, I don't, I don't, I don't mean this to be that. shade about ULA. Um, but Eula. you could say that they're naive about reusability because ULA has said over and over, uh, this is from Michael Baylor, uh, who is a, uh, NASA space flight member, uh, says ULA has said you need to refly a booster, a rocket booster 10 times for the economics of re re reusability to make sense. SpaceX is now up to six with Falcon 9. Cause remember last week they had flown a rocket for the sixth time. And Elon chimed in and said, payload reduction due to reusability. Wait, did we already talk about this? Yeah, we talked about this last week. But he got to this on on our show because I, I think I asked this while we were recording. So I had asked, you know, like, what, now that we're at six, is 10 possible? Because this is the ultimate question. Is this reusability thing really paying off, right? Like, who cares if it if it's not actually... So I asked you, like, what do you think is the limiting factor? And, and uh, now that, like, will they still get to 10? And Elon was pretty cavalier. He said, I don't, I don't want to be cavalier, but there isn't an obvious limit. A hundred plus flights are possible. Some parts will need to be replaced or upgraded. Cleaning all nine Merlin, Merlin turbines is difficult. Raptor is way easier in this regard, despite being a far more complex engine. Do you know why he says that? Yes, so that's what we're going to... And then so uh, Viv Falcon Heavy says, how often do you need to replace individual Merlins on Falcon 9? And Elon said, almost never need to replace uh, a whole engine, but some individual parts like turbine wheel need to be replaced over time, similar to a jet engine. So why would the... Uh, you know, why, why would a uh, Raptor engine be, you know, more reusable, I guess, than, than the Merlin, right? It kind of raises that question, the of fuel. course. Why? What was that? The fuel. That's a huge part of it. Joe, do you have a... I'll be here because all week, everyone. Because raptors are birds, and they can fly as often as they want. <laughs> so, so are Merlins. So Merlins. Ooh, they're both falcons. Did you guys know that? Yep, it's, it's a type, type of falcon. falcon. Yep. Well... <laughs> let me pull up where is the thing that he's okay i i already lost it <laughs> um let me copy this link and put it over here because elon kind of did talk about this more and i'm going to explain it to you guys because it is kind of confusing um maybe that's still not the right one sorry guys i am i lost it <laughs> uh but hour before we got started doing this that you could have had that <laughs> to prepare the, the crazy thing is I had to go back like scrolling a million times because Elon tweeted so much last week and it's like I Twitter now hides stuff like in Ness, you know, where it's like more replies. It's like and if you click on that, it doesn't even show the replies. It's just like, guys, I don't get it. I don't read um, replies on Twitter. It's gotten a... really, really confusing. And OK, so I asked him, is re is Raptor mostly more reusable friendly due to methane like we were talking about because it burns cleaner than than RP1. Right. It doesn't have those doesn't have carbon soot. Um, or does it have to do more with full flow running so cool through each pre-burner and through the turbines? So I still have a hard time grasping how such a high pressure can be better reuse wise, but it seems to somehow. And Elon said, not having long chain hydrocarbons, so the soot basically from RP1, and lowering pre-burner combustion temperature make a big difference. So let me explain this to you guys, because this is really, really complicated. What's a pre-burner? So remember, rockets, most liquid fueled rocket engines run on a either open cycle gas generator uh, or a closed cycle uh, with a, a pre burner. And that's the basically a mini rocket engine that so there's basically two, at least two rocket engines on every rocket engine. And one of them is just firing at a turbine and then they spin that turbine and that spins the pumps to feed the engine, the main engine. So you basically have to have this little rocket engine in order to feed the big engine and itself. It's this weird like cycle. It's really, really hard to get into. But the, the, the crazy thing is you obviously want to run that turbine. You want to hit the turbine with as much energy as possible while using as little fuel, right? Because the more fuel you're spending Efficiency, hitting that turbine, yeah. you're just kind of wasting energy at that point. That's not going towards your ultimate goal of making thrust out of the chamber, right? So... Um, okay. So, um, so, okay. So as you guys know there, you know, there's basically that, that mini rocket engine firing at the turbine and you want to spend as little amount of your fuel doing that because obviously that that's wasting fuel compared to 
running your main engine. So uh, you want to put as little fuel in your turbine, but just enough. You need to have, it's like this weird balance where you, you want to use as little and be as efficient as possible, you know, to be, able, to be able to spin your turbine fast enough to spin your pumps, right? So it's this weird balance. But the other balance, so first off, you have to get a certain amount of energy. That's like the ultimate goal. Now, the crazy thing is, of course, rocket fuel, you can you can extract a lot of energy by heating it up, you know, by, by burning it and then it gets hot and that expansion change, you know, you exchange your chemical energy for heat and pressure, basically, right? So you can still change how hot you're burning things by being fuel rich or or oxygen rich. If you're perfectly stoichiometric, like the perfect ratio of burning, that's the hottest it can get. It's not necessarily the highest performance, but it's the hottest. So in order to be able to shoot a rocket engine at a piece of metal, like in that turbine, you have to cool it down quite a bit. So you have to run really either fuel rich, really fuel rich so that the, the, the flames hitting it aren't going to melt the turbine or really oxygen rich so that the fuel hitting it isn't. Now, the, the deal is when, when you have like an open cycle or a normal pre-burner or gas generator, you only want to get it. It's just that you're riding that thin edge of like, I'm going to be putting just enough in there so that, it, you know, it does the thing it needs to do. But it's going to be almost hot enough to melt stuff, right? Like it's it's going to be just safe enough that it doesn't melt and just enough to power the system, right? Now, the cool thing with full flow and, and some parts of a closed cycle is that all of the fuel that feeds the main engine goes through the turbine. All of the oxygen that goes into the engine goes through the another turbine. So they actually have two totally separate mm -hmm. turbines. Both of them receive all of the fuel, which means that they can be extremely cool because you can just shoot in a tiny bit of the other. So if it's the, if it's the oxygen pre-burning, you shoot in just a little bit of fuel, but that in the grand scheme is still plenty of energy to spin those turbines. And in the fuel generator, in the fuel turbine and pre-burner, you put in just a little bit of oxidizer, and that's plenty of energy to spin the turbine because there's all of this fuel flowing through it. So what it ends up doing is, even though it can be really high pressure, it's actually running really cool because it's running extremely gas-rich or extremely mm. oxidizer-rich. Okay. And so that's not nearly as punishing on the metal. So it can be really high pressure, but it can you can actually lower the temperature for that's, the same amount of work. That's very paradoxical very paradoxical yeah sorry if that was a long rant on a weird <laughs> niche part of rocket science but like it, it's a huge paradigm because like or paradox yeah because it's like how does how does that make sense you can have higher pressure in these parts and like you know the raptors running like we talked about last week the raptors running over 300 bar now or they're hitting these targets of over 300 bar you'd think that'd just be like not reusable basically like how can you have that higher pressure and mm -hmm. have that be better for the rocket engine but it co come to find out they can actually, you know, these pre-burners the, and the turbines are the, the things that take the biggest beating. They're the point of the mm. highest pressure and the highest uh, temperature normally. Highest failure point. Exactly. So by a, by being able to lower the, the pressure, the, the keeping the pressure high but lowering the temperature altogether, it just isn't as bad for the metal. So now you don't have, so now you're running methane, which doesn't have, the, you know, the, the carbon soot like we talked about. And it's actually running at a lower temperature. So the turbines it don't get nearly as bad beaten. The, the bearings don't get nearly as beaten. And before you know it, you actually have a more reusable engine, even though it seems a lot more complicated and arguably is way more complicated on the outside. So here's why I have any idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I watched your Raptor engine video like last week. Did you? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and the reason cool. is because um, I, I guess I got into a little bit of a, a debate with somebody who, who was saying that SpaceX isn't doing, you know, very interesting stuff. And I'm like, do you know about the full flow stage combustion engine? I mean, they're the first people who are able to do this. And they're like, what's that? And I'm going, it's a big deal. Because yeah. I couldn't remember. I didn't know exactly how it works. So I went and watched your video and you did a really great job of explaining it. Um, and, it and it's interesting. I, I didn't know what a pre-burner was. I'd heard the term before, but... I'm guessing the pressure in that is not that high. It's just, um, or it's not burning as hot, like you just said. It's it's uh, yeah, it's not burning as hot. Yeah, because it's actually the highest pressure, believe it or not. The pre burner is higher pressure than the main combustion chamber because otherwise it'd go backwards. So that has to be higher pressure because it goes than from the main high to combustion, low because it's feeding it. Yeah, but always pressure always flows from high to low. Yeah. So you have to be forcing so. That's why, the, you know, people are, and, and it's still hard for me to figure out, like, why doesn't it go backwards into the main fuel tanks? <laughs> but it's because there's those pumps, and those yeah. pumps are, you know, sucking it in and 
and blowing it out. <laughs> yeah. So 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 the pressure in the pre burners is higher, but because it's less. Um, would you see, use the word sto stochastic or sto 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 clo less less close to the stoichiometric Stoical. ratio? Stoichio. Stoichio. Uh, but but because <laughs> there's like only a little bit of the mix in there, like you were saying, that the temperature's lower, even though the pressure's higher in the pre burners. Exactly. And then they go into the combustion chamber, and the is that where the whole three hundred bar thing is that they're talking about, or is that that's in the where they're measuring? Yep, that's where they're measuring the the pre the pressure is combustion. So chamber. okay, and and that's like record breaking pressure yes. in the combustion chamber. But the yes. pressure, what, am I reading you right? The pressure yeah. in the pre burners is even higher than that. Yeah, I so think that's got to be breaking even more records, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, because wow. that's actually the secret sauce. Is like yeah. The pre burner is what runs the engine. The pre burner, the turbine, and the turbo pumps. Like that whole assembly is basically the engine. the 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 chamber is just, the you know, it's just a place where they the fuels go. Just you know what I mean? Burns. Yeah, just where stuff. Well, burns. it's it, it almost kind of <laughs> on the car side. It almost reminds me of the difference between like a regular petrol and a diesel engine. Like where where all the pistons and firing and stuff are are, are different because of the pressure, and because mm -hmm. of the pressure, it can basically function differently like, like you need less Without fuel a it's a plug. different kind of fuel all those kind of things like like it's, it's just yeah there's all there's a, in whatever kind of mechanical thing you're spinning there yep. are all these different kind of pressure and temperature ratios that play yes. a big factor i know i think diesel engines and cars are are way like 2000 bar or something insane like some crazy the fuel high systems number. are extremely high like thousands yeah. of psi yeah yeah. Well, the, the, um, because the pressure to... it, it, the pressure is so high that the the the, the air explodes. Right, and well, that's that's what drives the the. Well, yeah. in a diesel the, engine, the, what the, the, the big lump deal stick, is the, as they they, call it. they inject the fuel directly into the into the cylinder for a diesel mm -hmm. engine, and they have to do it right after you know the the piston hits top dead center, because if you fire it before, it'll try to knock the piston backwards, right? It'll go and yeah. hurt yeah. the crankshaft backwards. So they inject it afterwards, which means. The fuel in that you know fuel injector has to be higher pressure than the main cylinder, you know, and the piston in the cylinder, which is very high pressure. Otherwise, yeah. it'll flow backwards, just like mm. we we're kind but of talking about. But it's a similar kind of principle. What you're talking about here, it's almost like um, a turbochargers in a car too. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. actually. I mean, tur the turbine is very similar, and the compressor is very similar <laughs> to the, the pumps. You know, it's it's riding this like edge of you're just trying to force as much as you can into that combustion chamber without melting and ruining stuff. And so this is why the Mer I'm sorry, the Raptor is more reusable than Merlin. Is mostly because it's yeah, the fuel choice and the lower temperatures in the preburners. All right. Yep. <laughs> I feel I feel proud of myself that I got one of those. <laughs> yeah. No, that's <laughs> yeah, um, that uh, that just that makes me excited just to see that something more complicated can work better. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>